Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Polymathy podcast. And today I have these two fantastic YouTubers, Iglika and Alex of Monoglossia, which I'm saying in a sort of a modern Greek way, um, <laughs> uh, but uh, Monoglossia, which is, I, I like the sound of modern Greek. And uh, these two are really fascinating to me uh, because of uh, how uh, bravely they've been studying other languages and doing so publicly uh, right on their YouTube channels, on their YouTube channel, Monoglossia, which you should subscribe to, by the way, and the link's right in the description. And uh, so anyway, uh, how are you two doing today? Oh, really good. Oh, Thank you. Right. Yeah. How about yourself? Oh, I'm great. I'm so happy to see both of you. I got to be on your uh, channel uh, a few weeks ago, which was a really fun conversation about all about Latin and Greek stuff and my yeah. my specialty. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I put that in quotes just because I'm um, uh, well, I'm self-taught in the languages, and I've learned so much from so many other people who uh, in the, the realms of the classical languages have, you know, they have PhDs and they've spent their whole lives and they're dedicated to it. It's something that I've gotten to do, which I love. Uh, I love it so much. Um, but I've learned so much from other people. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really a, a dabbler in a way. Um, but uh, and certainly I'm not a native speaker either, obviously. Uh, but yeah. uh, <laughs> you, however, are respectively native speakers of Bulgarian and French. So uh, we're going to talk about Bulgarian today. And um, first, let, tell me, tell all of us a little bit about the stuff you do on Monoglossia and, and why you started it. Okay, if you want to start. Um... Well, basically, we got to live in several places that were extremely international. And we really liked this uh, atmosphere and we wanted to give a little bit of taste of that. Um, Iglika is clearly the like the accomplished ling uh, linguist. Here. Well, not really a linguist, but... Well, okay, she speaks yes. several languages, basically. <laughs> and she's constantly learning. Uh, she, she's really always brushing off uh, her skills in, uh, in terms of learning. As mm. for me, I'm more of, um, well, uh, um, more of, I'm more interested in the cultural aspects of uh, things. Uh, um already as a french person like it feels like a big a great deal that i managed to speak english to start with okay oh, I like that come on myself. well <laughs> but yeah the it, it's it's very much the um i'd say uh, like world cinema like uh it's the books from uh italian authors or like scandinavian authors um this is more my uh my inputs and uh i also Kind of would like to share some facts that are less known about France, maybe. And I think it's also a great opportunity because the Balkans are absolutely fascinating and uh, Bulgaria in particular. Like, mm -hmm. I know it really quite well. So, and yes, we started this uh, mm -hmm. during lockdown. Like, maybe many other, other people started a fashion project. And yes, it, our ideas have been changing since we started. For example, we found that we really enjoy discovering rare languages that people are ready to share with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, yes, like um, learning in front of people, being people's classmates, we really enjoy this. And in real life, we've, we've noticed that people are interested by the way we speak several languages, including at home, like, mm -hmm. We speak to each other in English. We speak to our child in our respective languages. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, we also, of course, we like traveling, seeing different places. We met in the UK. Hmm. Where? Yeah. In the UK. <laughs> uh, in Essex, yeah. University of Essex. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Well, what and how great that you get to do it together. That's uh, that's fantastic. In fact, on um, on uh, Scorpio Martianos, my other channel tomorrow, I'm going to have a live stream in Latin with another couple, some really good friends of mine who are Latin speakers, and and uh, it's just so nice to see um, uh, couples being able to to do these things together, language based in particular, because you know what's mm. uh, what's uh, being in a relationship more than communication, right? So it's it's mm. wonderful. Yeah. 
Um, yes. Yeah. So uh, someone asked in uh, the comments, is the topic Bulgarian? Absolutely it is. In fact, <laughs> yeah. if you're uh, ready, uh, Iglika, because uh, they these yes. uh, two have prepared a uh, a whole PowerPoint presentation to talk about Bulgarian, which is, I think, very impressive and shows the, the kind of um, uh, industry and dedication that these two uh, are already bringing to the great content that they're producing. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through it. So if uh, you out there have some questions about Bulgarian, the language, I'm going to ask questions too as we go through. And oh wow, it's like looking into the the uh, <laughs> the endless infinity. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, and uh, yeah, so I'll uh, uh, as politely as I can uh, interrupt when we have some some questions, whether from me or from the audience. And uh, uh, when you're you're ready. Let's tell us about uh, Bulgarian. Sure, thank you. So I'm starting with a little disclaimer. So first of all, this is a polyglot friendly version of uh, the presentation of the Bulgarian language, as in we're not going to be starting from the ABC or anything. It's mostly interesting facts about Bulgarian. Actually, when Luke was our guest, uh, we noticed he was interested in some of the specificities of the Bulgarian language and this got us thinking and being interested and researching. Mm. So we hope you're going to enjoy all that. Um, I am personally not familiar with many Slavic languages. Um, I speak intermediate Russian, but if at any point I mention something that is not specifically uh, typical to Bulgarian, uh, you're free to let me know, of course. Uh, when there are about you... 14 national Slavic languages, what number constitutes many? <laughs> 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 like, how many do you have to know? Does it have to be like 12 mm. of them? <laughs> of them. I think great. Two, two is far more than I know. I have a very little, very small knowledge of uh, Russian myself. I love Russian. And I've mm. looked at all the Slavic languages, including a little bit of Bulgarian years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. I know I'm fascinated by them. I regret that I haven't given them the time yet. So so uh, your disclaimer is heard, but uh, not necessary for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and there is um, a fact about the sources that I have been looking at. Basically, there are some fashions in terms of even what is supposed to be yeah. objective mm. information. Uh, so I have tried to make sure I include only objective information, but then again, uh, sometimes sources are charged with the person's personal, political, historical opinions. So something to keep in mind. Um, and also, Alex is not Bulgaria, so mm. he, that's also a very, yeah. very important perspective. I, I try my best to kind of basically be relevant, but yeah, please do like be kind with the, <laughs> with my input. Thank you. <laughs> Well, starting with a light, interesting fact linked to nonverbal communication. Uh, maybe some of you know it. In France, there was an advertisement that referred to this. It's the fact that in Bulgarian, well, yes, yeah. yes, right? Yeah. Uh, the way we move our head when we say yes and no is the opposite of what you're used to. Please demonstrate. Like, uh, okay. Alex, Alex, no. can, you, can you ask uh, Iglika a yes or a yes question and then a no question? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a yes or no question. It could be in English if you want. Uh, yeah, no problem. No. Why not? Why not? Ask me again. What? Ask me again. I, I lied. It's not It's not true that I'm not okay. Ask me again, please. You're not okay, okay. Uh, Maybe it has to be yes or no. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's it's... so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> it is. No. And especially today, it has been a bit mixed up because of yes. bus traveling, uh, because of foreigners coming over. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what I do, actually. I'm sure I don't do it the Bulgarian mm, way but, when I don't talk to No, like to most, Bulgarians. most of the time you, you, you just do it like basically the way of, like let's say westerners do uh, uh at my I, I worked in bulgaria for for a while and all my colleagues would basically shake their head the uh, way like french mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. do or americans not or, surprised yeah. i'm doing it right now i'm not mm. doing it yeah yeah <laughs> mm. 
Wow, so, that's so interesting. So, and I'm I'm curious about the 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 language contact, like how, um, for example, would you would you say that it's right to the border where the where this particular inversion is true? So when you get to the border of mm -hmm. uh, Greece or Rom Romania, you know, it get it's. It's, oh yes, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have stories from people coming from Greece, from Romania that have had a problem with this. Yeah, right yeah. away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone that went to Bulgaria has a story about this. Yeah. Huh. Wow. And uh, and uh, there is, and want to let you know, um, uh, JP, who's in the audience, he uh, just uh, gave a super chat. Where I'm absolutely going to get to your question. Thanks so much for for asking. I just want you to know, I'm going to ask it here in a few minutes. But for now, uh, please uh, continue, Iglika. Okay, so uh, where this comes from, we don't really know. There are a couple of theories. Uh, since similar patterns have been found in Albania, Greece, and Turkey, there is a theory that it comes all the way from India. But in India, it's supposedly a way more complex system of shaking the head in various ways. And another theory is that the Bogars, which is one of the tribes that today's Bulgarian people are um, kept as ancestors, they, they used to raise horses. And there is a theory that in some way it's an imitation of the movement of horses, like the way horses would move their head when you give them food, when you take away the food. Wow, well, horse no, people of like it. in uh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Yeah. Mm. Okay, again on the light side, some funny literal translations of Bulgarian sayings. So we have Kakya Karas. How do you drive her? Um, of course, there is no her. Uh, how are you doing? Oh. How is it going? Oh, okay. Yes. That's very similar to uh, to Latin, actually. Mm -hmm. um, the way to say, mm -hmm. how is it going is quid agis. Literally, what do you drive or push? Mm. Fact, it, mm. Maybe most okay. of it means, how are you pushing the plow in the field? Quid agis. So like mm. driving, almost okay, like driving yeah. a car. Yeah. Mm. Very similar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. By the way, um, all pictures are Alex's work. Oh, <laughs> oh they're, oh, they're fantastic. Oh, well, it's certainly far better than any anything I could do. First of all, Alex, because you went ah, and you sighed like it, as if don't 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 be bashful at all. Thank you so much for the illustrations. I love them. <laughs> Thank you. So we have be careful in the picture. Vnimavaj v kartinkata. It mm. just means be careful what you're doing, mm. a bit with the implication of I'm looking at you, be careful mm. what I'm mm. seeing. Then we have Rabuta Muemaikata, work is his mother. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is no his, it's, it's just impersonal pronouns. Mm -hmm. um, and it just means, yes, work is so important, you can achieve it with work. Mm. And finally, I feel so sleepy, I can't see two. Uh, basically, we use this expression, I can't see two, linked to being tired. Mm. It's like I, it's mm. not like I can't see, it's I can't see two things for some reason. Wow, that's so interesting. <laughs> and uh, I, I have a, a, a question that's a little off topic, but I'd like to yeah. hear your, your answer. And the question's from JP, who sends in a super chat. Thank you so much, JP. That's really nice of you. Uh, and he asks, how do you keep a language alive in your head? I learn it as fast as mm -hmm. I forget, because there's no one to talk to. And Weizen beer hilft immer sich erinnern. A white beer, white, no, not white beer. What is that, a Weizen beer? Uh, 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 some kind of beer always helps uh, to remember. <laughs> I don't remember what uh, Weizen means. I'm, my German's terrible these days. Uh, and that's a really good question. Thank you again, JP, for the super chat. So the uh, so you've, of course, been learning many languages all at once now. And you live, of course, in France. You have each other because you can practice Bulgarian and French. But you may mm. not have the, I know you're learning Italian and other languages. How, how, would, what, how would you uh, answer JP's question? Well... Talking to oneself can also help, like just talking out loud, reading out loud. It really feels very animated. It doesn't feel lonely at all. It feels like you're keeping the language alive. 
Mm, you also, it, you're really into watching mm, films, yeah. for instance. Uh, for example, uh, while raising our son, was uh, we really made sure that he was maybe subjected to materials in all languages. Mm -hmm. Like uh, mm. in um, uh, when we lived in Bulgaria, really insisted that he read some French books. So he had basically French homeworks. It's exactly the same here. Mm -hmm. He's uh, is following a course in the, like the Bulgarian school in Paris, if I'm yes, not mistaken. Yes, absolutely. Mm. And uh, so it does take some uh, constant effort. Like it, it would be extremely easy for us and um, to to stick to one language and uh, sort of mm -hmm. forget the <laughs> like. Uh, Probably yeah. yes. I don't want to mm. to know because we're not going to stick to one language. Mm. But yes, and, it's uh, a common problem. Yeah. Uh, including English. Uh, mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we keep on using English in our everyday life because I'm not that basically for me, I wouldn't be surprised if I end up not speaking it at all <laughs> after mm. a while, which would be really a thing. But I, I barely use it for work, so that's, uh, that's a bit uh, frustrating. For example. Oh, well, I understand how <laughs> yeah. that is. I got to spend yeah. um, probably most of mm -hmm. a year total in Italy uh, all together mm -hmm. over the, the years. Um, mainly 2005, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I really haven't progressed in my Italian since then. I'm comfortable mm -hmm. in most conversations and what I read, but it's like, I, I almost feel embarrassed that I now speak Latin much more comfortably than Italian. I'm like, well, <laughs> my Latin's not perfect either, you know, um, but um, mm -hmm. uh, it's still, uh, it's still, it's like, yeah, I, I feel like I could, you could, I mean, look at your command of English. We can have this conversation and there's no problem. You know, mm -hmm. why, why do you have to? What's your goal? Mm -hmm. Is your goal to read some kind of specific literature, do something in mm -hmm. business? If you're meeting all your goals, there's only so much time, and I think it's worthwhile to, uh, to mm -hmm. go for those. A couple of folks yeah. uh, informed me that JP's question about uh, his comment on Weizenbier as wheat beer, both Isabella and mm. uh, Shishkien, I hope I said that right, looks Polish, uh, <laughs> corrected me there. <laughs> and uh, one comment on that, uh, um, Isabella also adds that she makes up stories in the language, and that really helps. Oh. I think it's a good comment as well. Oh. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And okay. uh, and just and one more on, on this before we, uh, we move on to the Bulgarian topic. JP asks, uh, well, he comments that the main difficulty is speaking. And after two weeks, uh, my speech returns uh, to to normal. And I guess like it's it's. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think JP, you're experiencing what everybody experiences, uh, which is that we, I think, I'd say as human beings, we're probably, we're, I think we're genetically programmed to be able to speak really just one language and mm. with true fluency. And that every time we learn anything in another foreign language, it's not unnatural to us, but it's definitely extra mm -hmm. effort. It's like being an athlete. Like I can, mm -hmm. I can run. I don't know, some number of meters. But could I run like a marathon? No, I have to train. Mm -hmm. Could I do mm -hmm. other athletic stuff? You know, it's very limited um, because I haven't done very much athletic training at all. Um, so eventually, especially with a specific target, like one could be an athlete, right? One could be just a good all around athlete, but they're especially good at uh, football or soccer. They're really good at the long jump because that's what they mm -hmm. train for. And I think that's like us with foreign languages. We train in maybe one or two languages, maybe five mm -hmm. or more, but ultimately um, uh, it's it's very similar. So I, JP, don't, don't sweat it. What you're going through now is very, very normal, uh, trying to immerse yourself. I think everything that uh, Iglika and Alex said was, was, uh, uh, was outstanding because it's, um, um, is exactly the same thing. Talking to yourself in the language all mm -hmm. the time, labeling your your house, like uh, my office here, I have some labels and Greek and stuff just to help uh, keep it up. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Well, please continue with uh, uh, your presentation here. Okay. So a quick note about the location of Bulgaria and the original Bulgarian people. It is actually a very key location, or at least in the past it was, because Bulgaria is situated in the corner between three continents. Mm -hmm. We have Europe, uh, Asia, and Africa. So we had many important roads going through it, uh, including Roman ones like uh, Via Diagonalis, which went from Belgrade to Istanbul. Mm -hmm. And as a country, Bulgaria was established in 
681, which makes it the oldest European country to have kept its original name. And the people who made up Bulgaria at the time were the Thracians who had been living there for a long time, also the Slavs, um, several Slavic tribes that migrated in the area, and then the Bulgars, which are kind of uh, the biggest mystery out of the tree because we don't know uh, how many of them there were, what the proportions were, and we don't know where exactly they came from. I remember I used to study that the Bulgars were maybe Asian from Eastern Asia. Well, now the most common theory is uh, that they were a Turkic tribe. Mm. Um, That's fascinating. To, I had no idea that the Bul Bulgars weren't uh, Bulgarian, I think, the language in your country. So I mm -hmm. think it was Slavic. I wouldn't consider, wouldn't think of the original foundational people being anything other, but that's that's fascinating. Turkic. Mm. Yes, yes, many people in Bulgaria, many people were interested in this because it's a bit of a mystery for us. And in terms of the language, um, it is mostly Slavic in terms of vocabulary. Uh, there are a few words that are supposedly Bulgar, like kuche, dog, mm. which is not similar to the word for dog in other Slavic languages. And sometimes we can see that there are two parallel vocabularies. Uh, for instance, for bread, we have chlep, which is um, like, like Russian, basically, which is a Slavic word. But we also have samun, which is, um, I think, Iranian, Persian. Um, and this talks of the um, languages of the two tribes that mixed up a little bit. Uh, a fun fact is that the name Boris is uh, not Slavic, but Bulgar. It actually, uh, it went from Bulgaria to Russia. Usually things are the other way around. Mm. So, I remember my uh, history mm. teacher telling me this. Mm. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Boris, <laughs> Boris Johnson. Has, For example. Uh, yes. Bulgarian name. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's, uh, I, I find that interesting too, that Western Europeans have taken on some Slavic names here and there, like say, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Natasha, yeah. which is of course the diminutive of, uh, say, mm -hmm. Russian Natalia and uh, Boris and so forth. That they're actually, mm -hmm. um, they're not that uncommon, which is great. I mean, they're, they're to have that, but there isn't that much historical, cultural intermixing. I think mm -hmm. in between mm -hmm. and Western parts of Europe, especially with names, so I find it really interesting and a pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, moving on to specific letters and sounds. We have the difficult sounds in the alphabet that come in exactly this order. S, Ch, Sh, Sh, Th. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, we have um, the next letter. It is not pronounced. It doesn't have a, a sound. Uh, it is called Er Mawak. In the alphabet, it always appears before O and never in the beginning of words. A couple of examples. Asensior. Petio. It doesn't sound very typically Bulgarian, does it? No. It is. It has this soft feeling to it that is not very common to a Bulgarian. Mm. And that you would commonly associate with, uh, for example, Russian. Russian, yes. Mm. Could you yeah. demonstrate that sound again? Yo, asensior, petio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's another version, of course, with the i kratku, which is the e with um, a little sign on top of it. It's mm -hmm. exactly the same sound. Mm -hmm. They're used um, interchangeably, but one comes before a vowel, the other before a consonant. The sounds are identical. Then a letter that is very, very typical. It's, uh. it's even there in the name Bulgaria, Bulgarski. Mm -hmm. It is a very strong sound, and it's a mid-back, unrounded vowel. <laughs> mm. And yeah. officially, mm. only one word begins with it, ago. But today, for example, we take some words from English, and it can be a ready transliteration of uh, things like update, update. Mm. Mm. Um, and ago is angle? Uh, yes, that's ah. right. Cool. So yeah, that's the word in the third line uh, on the far right. For those of us who don't know Cyrillic, it's uh, um, thankfully my my I can 
read the um, Russian version of Cyrillic so I can follow along at least. So, yeah, so uh, uh, Igal um, is there on the right of the third line. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Can you read the others too? I, oh, yeah, well, that's that'll be fun. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Bulgaria, Bul, is that right? Bulgaria, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. but uh, mm -hmm. rib, is that fish? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, lib, I don't mm -hmm. know, lib, with Luf. oh, it's love, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know what it means. Lion. Lion yeah. Oh, of course. It is uh, like, also yeah. a very key yeah. word for us because we have um, like the national. Uh, coat of arms we have mm -hmm. um yes, yes we mm -hmm. have a lion also the currency in bulgaria is called lef mm -hmm. uh, which proves that in the past it was actually pronounced differently without mm -hmm. the uh, it was pronounced that's, lef that's interesting uh there's more yeah. than one currency in that region which uses lion mm -hmm. okay yeah. interesting yeah i thought i thought in the past at least uh mm -hmm. and then and the last one so uh organ Mm -hmm. uh, fire. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then Rika is arm, hand? Hand, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hand and arm, yes. Mm. Yeah, both of them. So I, I, yes. I, I think mm. many Slavic languages use the same word for mm -hmm. both hand, yes. arm, and foot, leg. <laughs> yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so actually, these last two, I put them because they're confusing even to Bulgarians. Uh is one of the six vowels. Uh, they're paired, and a uh comes together with a. Mm -hmm. So if a syllable is not stressed, we can't tell if it's an a uh or an a. Uh. For example, organ, we absolutely can't tell. Mm -hmm. uh, raka. And we have to think of another word that has the same root and where the stress falls on the vowel, so we're mm -hmm. sure what it is. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, raka is pretty straightforward. Rachen. Uh, to make the adjective, and we got the stress, everything is good. Mm. For organ, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, if we make the adjective here, it will be ognen. So it falls off. And when it does, it means that it was an uh. If uh -huh. it had been an a, uh, it would have stayed. Uh huh. That makes <laughs> a lot of sense. Mm. Sort of a shadow yes. vowel that fills mm. space and it comes in and out. Mm. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And then the consonants also come in pairs. And this is another reason why Bulgarian is not completely phonetic. Uh, when it comes to the end, when these consonants come at the end of a word, uh, we cannot tell which one it, it is. Is it the voiced or the voiceless one? Of course, the pairs exist in many languages, but for us, it really causes a problem. We we never pronounce mm -hmm. a voiced one at the end of a word. For example, um, grat. I cannot say grad. I will say grat. Mm -hmm. Nos, mm -hmm. bes. Mm -hmm. um, and in other languages, for example, in French, if I'm forced to say garage, mm -hmm. <laughs> garage, Mm -hmm. It feels like I have to add a tiny vowel after it, otherwise I cannot say it. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it can take a while to realize that actually it's uh, it's not written in the way you imagine it <laughs> to be. So mm -hmm. if you if you're not used to this rule. So. Okay, Alex, yeah. let me test you oh. first. This is a complicated word. Yeah, svatba. Mm. It's uh, it means wedding. Wedding. Yeah. Is it with a t or with a d? d. Actually, when we pronounce the. <laughs> The letters in the alphabet, mm. we say uh always, t, d. And even when we're thinking, when we're wondering, mm. we say uh. Mm -hmm. it's, uh. Actually, it's a bit easy. I've, I've seen it written, so it's not much of a. Okay, <laughs> so, tell me. So, 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 so. No. No? No. Wow, well, I got it wrong. <laughs> it, actually, it's interesting. Many, yeah. many Bulgarians get it wrong mm. because we hear that it's a t. We hear it like a t, mm. and we think there must be a catch. It must be a d. Mm. <laughs> Usually there is a catch, but well, actually there I, isn't. I have seen it written with a d. So. I'm sure you have. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, svatba, right? You're saying svatba. 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 Are you perfect. saying that the first part is un is unvoiced, or is it just written? It's written the. Uh, it's written t. 
it's mm. actually in this case it's but written it's to, and it's pronounced uh, mm. yes but we can't tell basically it's one of those words that we just have to memorize mm. we can't mm. think of any word deriving from it Mm. All right. and um, I can do the other two. If you no, they're full look. So we have two words that sound very similar. Okay. Samolet and soadolet, plain and ice cream. So okay, can so you try to guess which, so you, you, which one? Okay, so you pronounced them just now. They both ended with an with a voiceless the. Yes, always. Yes. That's, that's the samolet, phonetic rule in the language. Mm. Um, yes. So, uh, samolet ends with a da, with T, English T, mm -hmm. only because yes. I know samolet in, in Russian. In Russian mm -hmm. so. Yes. And, uh, and sva, sva bo, is that? Uh, Swadolet. Sva sva do, sva I can't, mm -hmm. I'm, and my Russian is not very good, so I can't think of it. What I would just guess that's the the is that the D? That's right. Mm -hmm. Just because and we have two examples, but I had no idea. I'll tell that. you why. Yes, that's true. But they sound so similar, yet they're so different the yeah. way the way they're formed. Of course, Bulgarian being a highly morphological language, they come from other roots. Uh, some or let comes from some alone, and let. Letia to fly. Yeah. Yeah. Also fly. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then swadolet comes from slad, which means uh, sweet, mm -hmm. and led, which Slut means ice. Being. Yeah, Russian now. So, yeah. yeah. Leden, yeah, I, ice. I think I do something that's very annoying, uh, which is <laughs> I'm constantly comparing the Slavic language I'm talking mm -hmm. to someone about to Russian, and I apologize. I've always done that. With I do that too. Oh, do? <laughs> Russian is the one I'm most familiar with. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. It's like, oh, it's like Russian. I, know, I must be an irritating <laughs> to all of you out there who are, are <laughs> Slavic, non-Russian Slavic speakers, especially because it's as if I'm reducing it, just because Russian is so well known. Mm -hmm. It's like comparing uh, Norwegian and Swedish and Danish to English constantly. I'm sure that would be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, but it's something that uh, actually plans the Bulgarians the they, they were sort of wondering why I was uh, I, I had no knowledge whatsoever of Russian mm -hmm. and why I would actually try to learn some Bulgarian first. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it's unfortunately a common uh, <laughs> yes yeah, to, uh, it's to, only natural yes yeah. and mm -hmm. I'm I'm really happy when people are interested in mm -hmm. Bulgarian oh extremely <laughs> mm. I love that look at the cat inside the mouse's mouth the mouthpiece <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is really flexible word order taken to an extreme. The mouse ate the cat. Mishkata is the kotkata. Basically, yes, um, because of the way the places have been switched <laughs> from the subject and the object, it really sounds like the mouse ate the cat. Mm. But Basically, it has to be said with a specific intonation, mm. and it really sounds like it is the mouse that the cat ate. It can exist, no problem, but it is not something we would commonly say. There is no strict word order, but there is a very highly preferred word order. Yeah. Another example that sounds like it makes sense in both cases, unlike the previous one, is instrumenta pravi maestura uh, and then there is a bit of a difference although they would sound exactly the same when they're pronounced one is instrumenta the other one is instrumented the two mm. so we have the two makes the master or the master makes the two mm -hmm. and here we can tell which one it is because actually the Masculine definite article has two versions depending on whether the noun is uh, the subject or object in the sentence. Mm. So we have the full one, instrumented pravi maestra. So That's definitely good. the tool makes the master. Uh -huh. huh. yes, a little That's bit cool. more about the postfixed um, articles a little later. They are also That's interesting. Right. And you're eventually going to get to the topic soon of um, the the uh, grammatical cases. Some people have commented mm -hmm. and asked about about yes. that. We'll, we'll wait till we get there. Um, there is a question, a phonetic question, that's uh, been asked. It has multiple parts. So uh, me 
has asked this question about the realization of the letter. How is this pronounced? I don't know it. Do you recognize this? It looks like an old church Slavonic letter. Um, how can we? Oh, you, oh, you can't see it right now. What we'll do is because uh, yeah, right now they can't see me and uh, or the, the comments that I put on the screen. So what we'll do is we'll uh, ask that uh, that question later. So continue with the presentation, please. What if I open? Uh, I can just. Oh, it's okay. It'll be easy. Quickly. It'll be. We'll put it on the screen and we'll see it later. Uh, mm -hmm. But we'll, I'll, I will come back to your question. Me. Thanks for sure. staying with us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Being negative. So this might be a bit of a national characteristic, but this is not mm. what uh, we're think? going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the double negation, like in many Slavic and not only languages, or higher negation. Mm. Uh, for example, not that it makes much sense, but I have never seen anyone anywhere. Nikuga, nesam vizdo, nikugo, nikade. We have all these negations. Never, I have not seen nesam vizdo, nikugo, no one, and nikade, nowhere. And when it comes to agreement, we agree with what the person said, not with the general positive. For example, didn't you? The correct answer would be yes, I didn't. But once again, like with the movement of the head, this has been changing a little, which makes it even more confusing, of course. Mm. <laughs> but yes, uh, now we can do both. We can mm. absolutely do both. And it would be just the context, the tone. Actually, yeah, you have an anecdote about this, don't you? Like with, you, you said it in English. With, with my teacher. Yeah. Yes, yes. When I was in high school, I was in an international high school and... Uh, my teacher was uh, Australian. She would ask me, uh, didn't you do your homework? And I would say yes, thinking that I was agreeing with her that I didn't do my homework. And then she would be like, I don't understand. And where is it? So there was a big misunderstanding. But... I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's so funny how that's like Japanese. Yeah. Yes. The the saying yes to the negative statement. Yeah, mm. it's not here, uh, is it? Mm -hmm. Yes, which means no. Is that correct? Yes, yes, absolutely. Wow. It's, yeah, I remember getting used to that in Japan because I. <laughs> but would... my Japanese teacher, who lives in Bulgaria, says mm -hmm. that he struggles with this in Bulgaria. So that would mean we've really been including mm. the more universal version of it. Wow. He said that he struggles with it with Bulgarians, so yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So um, from now on, we're going to mostly focus on the non-Slavic features, which kind of set Bulgarian apart from other Slavic languages. Of course, we have some very, very Slavic features like the perfective and imperfective verbs, uh, also very morphologically rich vocabulary, lots of uh, prefixes, suffixes. Mm -hmm. And then we have other features which set it apart, uh, the use of articles, the lack of infinitive, lack of cases, and the future tense. We'll see this in more detail. Uh, there is a brief history of the language. It has been divided into Old Bulgarian or Old Church Slavonic, Middle Bulgarian and Modern Bulgarian. Uh, Old Church Slavonic um, is situated between the 9th and 12th centuries. It was close to Proto-Slavic or the common language that was uh, spoken by Slavic tribes. Mm. And it was not highly localized. It was not specific to Bulgaria. Uh, it is a fascinating language. I really wish I, I knew I could learn more about it and I would love to one day. I have a suggested source for you in case you're interested. Hmm. Old Church Slavonic Grammar by Horace uh, Lund. Um, but I want to speak it. I want the, <laughs> I want the, the reader full immersion book. I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> someday. <laughs> <I will. laughs> Oh, that actually, we have, that is we have kind people of writing Old English and uh, 
uh, an old English type book like that. You may have seen me talk about the Familia mm-hmm. Romana of the Lingua Latina mm-hmm. Perse Illustrata mm-hmm. series, which teaches mm-hmm. Latin and Latin. And so there's a definitely there's an old English group uh, who's working on making something like that. So we'll have to get an old Church Slavonic group together too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, I would yeah. have to learn this language. It has two alphabets. Uh, first, there was the Glagolitic. Then, hundred years later, it became the Cyrillic. Uh-huh. what is now Cyrillic, mm. and it is very unique because it was um, composed by one person, literally, uh, Saint Cyril of uh, Thessaloniki, yeah. and so we can't really look back and think, oh, this letter, like, what influenced it, how we can trace it to other languages and alphabets, because it was really um, based on the language There was an alphabet made for it. Then Middle Bulgarian, between the 12th and 16th centuries, uh, it saw some radical changes like the increase of prepositions, decrease of cases, the postfixed articles, and the future, which te, that we use today. And finally, modern Bulgarian, starting from the 17th century. And we will talk about modern Bulgarian's features. First, the lack of infinitive. There is no infinitive form. So what we use, for example, in dictionaries would be what we call the basic form, uh, which is the present tense, first person singular. For example, we say gua goa sum, the verb to be, uh, and sum actually means I am as sum. Mm-hmm. We don't have a word for it like uh, mm. être. Uh, mm. or, uh, well, like Latin sum. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and you're saying that you don't have infinitives. Yes. Right. Yes. So you say that I am for. Mm-hmm. Me, yes, it is the verb you. I am, is what we say. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah just like uh, Hina, uh, Hina, no, I'm sorry, Hina, that's in your Greek. Um, Naime in modern Greek, mm-hmm. that I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, 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 mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. And we use prepositions when infinitives will be used in other languages, for example, is come the yam, I want to eat. Uh, we conjugate both of the verbs, is come, as is come, I want, as yam, mm. I eat. Um, and then uh, just to show where it comes from, it is maybe linkable to the subjunctive in other languages. For example, vaznoe davni mavash. It is important that you pay attention. Um, it's basically in other languages when we have a different subject and object, we can use the subjunctive, uh, we can use a phrase starting with a preposition, mm. but in Bulgarian we always do it even when the subject and the object are the same person. Mm. Mm. Um, so in, in Greek it is also like that. In Bulgarian the infinitive is supposed to have been lost around the 12th century. Is there any trace in Greek uh, of an infinitive in the past, ancient Greek? Or? Oh, yes. Ancient Greek has so many infinitives. Mm-hmm. That's what I think is um, maybe just a little funny that modern Greek lost them. Although, as we see, it's a feature which has happened uh, in this region and other languages that not, aren't in the Balkans. But um, yeah, the uh, the uh, Greek has uh, infinitives for uh, which are aspectual. So it has a um, a future uh, infinitive as well as a, a, a present continuous infinitive and an aorist well, infinitive. So a, mm-hmm. a, a perfective mm-hmm. um, uh, type infinitive, and uh, it can also do something equivalent to infinitives that make it passive and active. And it's re- it's great. And the, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, and if you're out there uh, to correct me, please correct me. I think Pontic Greek, which I think they still they call um, Romaiki uh, still today, spoken mm-hmm. in uh, northern Turkey, is uh, the only mm-hmm. remaining um, dialect or language of the modern of the Hellenic languages that still has the infinitive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Then something about tenses. Uh, Bulgarian has nine tenses. Oh, did, did and... you you uh, stop sharing your screen? Did you mean to do that? Oh, really? Uh, oh, I that's, didn't miss yeah. anything. That's okay. That's... Okay. That's all right. It's okay. 
Why do you just hear it again? Or, it's like, or, yeah. <laughs> that's your thing. It's just that. Oh, maybe I touched something on the, the screen here. But yeah, all of you are asking some really great questions and uh, mm -hmm. cool comments too. And we're going to talk about them. <clears throat> For example, we're, we're uh, talking about the Sprachbund, a lovely word. I used it in my video I put out today. Sprachbund, mm -hmm. a lovely German uh, term for a language union, uh, a unity of uh, languages, a family of, of languages. And uh, indeed, you're exactly right. We're sharing your screen again. We can see just fine. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so there's a lot of, and we're going to talk about those. I'm aware of some of them, and I think there's some Romanian speakers as well in the audience, as well as Greeks um, and a Macedonian speaker. I think they've mentioned. So we can uh, we let's, we can talk about all, that all together. So we'll get to all of your questions as we go through. So please continue. Great. So uh, a tense that uh, we're going to mention is the past indefinite. Uh, there are a couple of pairs here of the past perfect and the past indefinite tense. Basically, the difference is really to say it very generally that the past indefinite tense means that you weren't there when the, the thing you are saying uh, happened. For example, our son does this all the time. He gets these two tenses wrong in Bulgarian. So I have to ask him this question all the time. Were you there? Were you there? And mm. this is like a drill for him to, to use the correct tense. So this is a tense of reported speech because you were there. Mm, yes, mm. it is. Um, apparently something like this exists in Turkish, a form of evidentiality, huh. like the tense. Um, being based on what evidence there is um, to w what you're saying. Mm, that's so, so interesting. And there's uh, yeah. the closest thing I can think of is something I learned about in the Scots language, Scots being a mm -hmm. language very closely related to modern English. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Scots has a, a type of conjugation for reporting something that that happened. For example, so mm -hmm. instead of like, um, I I went to the pub and I saw my friends. It's the present tense with the addition of the letter s. So it's actually the third person form. So I goes mm -hmm. to the pub, and I'm I'm not saying with a, I should start to say it with a more Scottish sound. Uh, goes to the pub. I guess I can't do. I'm not. I, I'm sorry, everyone out there. My <laughs> Scots language study is, is uh, greatly diminished, and it was never very strong yet. But so I goes mm -hmm. to the pub, uh, and I see my friends. My friends, so and it, I, see, I see my friends, something like that. So I'm sorry, all the Scots speakers out there. I'm not uh, at all a specialist. I'm just very interested in the language. But it's, uh, it's amazing. So, yeah, because, it's not quite guess, the same, really, because it's a. This, yeah. Yeah, this is, but it's it reminds me of it because it has this element mm -hmm. of narrative. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. yes. Like very when you hear it yeah. in Scottish, you would think that's wrong English, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it's. Yeah. Yes, right. it's we would consider really... that non-standard uh, English, mm -hmm. but it is standard Scots, and an important part yeah. of the way they regularly communicate when the Scots mm -hmm. talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, so the uh, first couple of sentences. Yeah. No, no. I, 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 uh, uh, Isabella mm -hmm. comments that uh, also the mm -hmm. uh, S thing is used in the north of England as well, which makes sense because oh, we're in the northern okay. English uh, 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 dialects uh, yes. are yeah, yeah. Mm. actually quite closely related to the Scots language. So mm. uh, continue, please. OK. Um, so the first couple of sentences are based on like a story our son would tell, for example. Uh, his parents uh, grounded him. Mm. If he says it in this way, this would imply that he was there, which obviously he wasn't. So the mm. correct way to say it would be mm -hmm. Then, uh, based on the illustration, it started raining while he was waiting for the bus. Mm. It sounds really odd. It would imply you were there with the person, but then you're talking about him. Um, this is the second person. It mm -hmm. started training while you were waiting for the bus, and I was there too. Uh, what sounds more natural would be Zavaliawe, look to a chakal of Tobosa. I see. It, start, it started raining while he was waiting for the bus, and it's something that he, he told me. Mm. Then it has some uh, different meanings as well. For example, very similarly to 
the present perfect in English, it can be used when the result is important, not the action or when it happened. For instance, the gubilsam si klucha. I have lost my key. Hmm. It, I was there, obviously, but I didn't pay attention. It is not important. Hmm. But right now, we have the verb to be. So the gubilsam, it really implies that is the situation I'm in right now. And also we can use it if I can't remember something, if I didn't pay attention, again, we would use the indefinite as if we were not there. Hmm. Cool. Okay, and here's a challenging sentence. Um, can you read it? <laughs> uh, okay, so, bil sem se napil i sem se bil bil. Oh, well, I don't okay, see so where that sentence is. It, is that on the, uh, were you there slide? Uh, it's on the next one. Uh, is it not moving? Not be shy. That happens sometimes. I'm going to okay. wait. Uh huh. No, I see it. Now it moved. Uh, and then okay. see it again, Alex. All right. So, <laughs> bil sem se napil i sem se bil bil. Okay. So, we have a lot of bil. The closest translation we can come up with is they say that I got drunk and got into a fight, but this is nonsense. <laughs> so we have bill, which is um, the past indefinite of some, just the verb to be. Uh, we have another bill because, uh, yeah, because the person did two things, basically. Bill some sin appeal. I got drunk. Is some say bill, bill. The other the third bill comes from the verb be a say, to fight. Uh, which is a reflexive verb in Bulgarian. Literally, it would be something like I I beat myself. Mm. So it implies uh, someone is saying this to the person. Uh, someone claimed it. Oh, it doesn't need to be said explicitly. They say, or someone said, just the fact that this tense is used means that someone said it. Hmm. And which uh, slide are you on again? Is, 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 is it uh, the, the bill sum still? Yes, yes. It is? Okay, good. Still. I want to make sure. Um, it, uh, are you able to share the um, full screen or do you want to avoid doing that? Uh, is it not the full screen? Uh, no, the uh... right hand corner is the presentation. Okay. The third button on the right. Go on and yes. that's on the next right. to it. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. I, I did now. Just taking his time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all of you out there ask, are asking some really interesting questions and some nice comments that we'll uh, get to hear. Okay. Uh, very soon. Great. There you go. Great. Continue, please. <laughs> okay. Is it now moving yes. to the next slide? Yes. yes. Okay. So now, after this, sentence which was challenging to non-native Bulgarian speakers. We're moving on to some mistakes that Bulgarian speakers make because of course that says a lot about the language too. Uh, we don't make lots of mistakes in terms of, let's say, uh, spelling the way, for example, in English, there they are. Mm -hmm. Again, because Bulgarian is very uh, morphological Words mm -hmm. are long, we don't have many homonyms, mm -hmm. but what we get wrong could be some expressions when we are not sure where they come from. Uh, for instance, you really like mm -hmm. this one? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's extremely amusing to me. <laughs> In general, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's a very fashionable colloquial expression. and People use it so much. Mm. Uh, even when it just doesn't fit the situation. It is not about something that happens in general at all. It's something that just happened yeah, once, once, once yeah. yes. Like, so, something uh, really not, uh, basically something really uh, specific, something that was like really kind of quite, uh, yeah, it have a, for exceptional. <laughs> and like someone will say, po princip. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, uh, did you, I don't know, like, did you close yeah. the door? Yes, in general, <laughs> for example, princip, uh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Another one is predvit. It's a word that doesn't exist. The mm -hmm. V shouldn't be there. V means ah. in. Uh, it's just predvit. The prefix is pred, which means in front of. 
and predvit means uh, to take into account to think about it's used very often and it already has a prefix uh, the v is really not needed for some reason it get to be popular in this way with the v it makes me think a bit of something like aujourd'hui aujourd'hui in yeah. french extremely, people say this like, extremely annoying <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's, it's very fashionable mm-hmm. very common yes like, yes yeah um, mm-hmm. Another expression that is used often but is wrong is pitam vapros, to ask a question, which again it is, it can't be said like that. Yeah. Uh, pitam alone means to ask a question. It sounds and awkward if you in use Latin it, too. Mm-hmm. Because the word for a question is a thing asked, it's rogatum, so rogare rogatum. We, mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. I, as far as I, I know, it's not attested mm. in yes. ancient in French too, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Demande une question, you wouldn't say that, right? Uh, no, you no. Know. Uh, but you um, would say pose une question, though, which could be... Question, like, okay. yeah. Mm. Yes. yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yes, we can say that too. Mm-hmm. Zadav on the process. Yeah. Like the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm thinking about other languages. Actually, very often, mm-hmm. the verb to ask and question are the same like in Spanish wouldn't that be something like preguntar una pregunta mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just yes very often it's um, just uh, people wouldn't make this mistake because it's basically the same word even mm-hmm. uh, then we have some false friends with English uh, I'm sure this is not typical to Bulgarian only uh, for example pretendiram is not to pretend it's to to have an ambition Ah. Speculum. <laughs> yes, mm. completely different. Um, we still have that. Um, mm-hmm. In English, uh, a pretender f- to the throne mm-hmm. is an idiom. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah it's exactly uh, the I same idea. Say the same thing. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes. ten, yeah. Tendere in Latin means to stretch, essentially. And prai, prai mm-hmm. is front. So mm-hmm. prai tendere is to stretch forward and has this reach. Mm-hmm. And the idea of a pretense, uh, to pretend. It, to pretend something means you're, we also say idiomatically in English, you are reaching, mm-hmm. meaning you're grasping mm-hmm. for something mm-hmm. that you're trying to say yeah. or to mean or to do that isn't mm-hmm. something that you can quite do because you have to extend. Mm-hmm. It's not right there. All right, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. It makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, completely. <laughs> and yeah. speculerum is not to, to speculate in the sense of guess. Uh, it is always the sense of... Um, do like abuse, uh, which maybe you do you have this in French, yeah. Well, uh, speculation, and I think you can also say it, uh, spec- uh, uh, but it is very not. negative, yeah, it cannot um, mean just to, mm. to guess, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, like, uh, but basically, when you, uh, you like when you, there is something like a speculative, speculative, it's mm-hmm. really the idea that you're exploiting mm-hmm. something, yes, so, yes, but yeah. again, because you. Oh guessing kind of well in bulgaria it just mm. completely it doesn't even have the meaning of guessing at all mm. it's just really i'm um, abusing like my power for example mm. uh and finally uh the fact that it is very fashionable to use english words even when we have our own words uh, our own equivalents uh I would not say this is a mistake. Maybe they were not in dictionaries until recently, but I would guess that they are now. So it's not necessarily a mistake. It's just a tendency maybe for some people to forget the Bulgarian words and use the international ones instead. Mm-hmm. Like Exactly, internationalen, <laughs> international. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we have Mezdunaroden mm-hmm. or Alienatia. Uh, when we have Otsuzdenje. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, and then about cases, which is um, a long topic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so it always seems strange to people to, that there are no cases in Bulgarian. Um, well, they used to be cases, um, but now Bulgarian is an analytical language, meaning we use prepositions to convey the same meaning that cases would be used for. Uh, we can feel today some remnants of cases. I will give a couple of examples. There is the vocative form when words change and even people's names change, like my parents would tell me. 
Igliko, close the door, please. Exchanging the A with an O. And this is officially um, a form to address someone. It is colloquial and also personal, really something you would expect in a family environment. And my parents would always call me Igliko. Mm. Not all names, doesn't work with all names. For example, my brother is called Nicola. They, there's nothing you can do with that. Mm. Yes. Mm. Um, but there will be an A for for many masculine Yuan names. Or Ivan, like Ivane or something? Ivane, mm. definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, does it work with the... I, I'm, I think I'm reaching there. But for <laughs> the equivalent of Sasha would be Sasha. Sasha, yes. And I think your granddad would call me Sasha. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. If uh, mm. if the name is Sasha, which would be the diminutive, mm. then Sasha would be the vocative form of it, definitely. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Then when we talk about pronouns, uh, even when we study pronouns, we use the terms uh, accusative and dative cases, even though that's kind of stretching it. Again, it we can use these words to refer to the of direct and indirect objects in other languages too, even if they don't have cases. However, the dative is the one that fell off the latest. And for example, to whom, na kugo, kumu used to be used until recently. And no one would say it in a conversation, but to read it somewhere, to see it in books would be completely natural. No one will wonder what this is. And then some fixed expressions, uh, for example, Swava Bogu, thank God, glory to God, literally, mm -hmm. uh, just directly from Old Church Slavonic. And people don't think of it as a case, um, just as, an, as a whole expression. Okay, moving on. So, of course, um, we're wondering what exactly changed. Why do you know Bulgarian? 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 That's right. Because yeah. the language is next to it, uh, Greek mm -hmm. and Romanian, for example, and also Macedonian, right? Don't they all have um, I think so. Mac yeah. Macedonian yes. as well? All seem mm -hmm. to have it. So that's that's the, the most un balkan sprach like characteristic, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So we can simply say that the language changed with time, which is plausible, but why not? But then again, yes, why didn't it happen with our neighbors? Mm -hmm. uh, another theory is that it changed under foreign influence. And a third theory, which is highly supported today, and it's kind of interesting is that maybe it was there to start with. Um, that even starting from uh, old Bulgarian, people were not speaking the way they were writing. And this, this was actually a big problem. And uh, there was a uh, reform in the 14th century that wasn't very successful because people were speaking in a very different manner from the way uh, texts uh, had to be written following strict uh, grammatical rules. Also, uh, supposedly it was very long ago that the genitive and dative cases became one. Um, yes, so it is the whole theory that due to the Bulgar tribe possibly, uh, the vocabulary was always very Slavic, but then the grammar was maybe not that Slavic. And influences have been sought by going as far as Egyptian, <laughs> uh, which of course we cannot know. Uh, it's understandable that researchers would want it to be true because that would be so cool. But we don't know, but there's some- oh Gosh, Egyptian, some evidence that is a later form of Egyptian. That's, that's so hard <laughs> yes, to believe. I, mean, yeah. I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe not, maybe it's possible. I just, how would they get there? Why? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have Egyptian, then Coptic, Persian, Pashto, uh, Tukarian. So really taking a big trip through mm. Africa and Asia. Um, Again, yes, Bulgaria, of course, was in a suitable position for many people to go. Mm. But then, yes, I guess it's something that will continue to, to be researched. Mm. Absolutely. Hopefully not only by mm. Bulgarians. 
Yeah. Yeah. That. Well, that's, well, that's sort of our, our hope. We have a lot of really uh, accomplished uh, polyglots in the audience and people who are just interested in this topic. So perhaps as we hope, um, just sharing this little bit will, it could lead to uh, maybe not directly, but indirectly to exactly what you're talking about. Someone yeah. investigating the um, Bulgar origin. Mm. Yes. Great. <laughs> so, uh, some elements that have served as evidence for some uh, researchers. Uh, one is the article Na, that is traced to Coptic and possibly to Egyptian, although it is not certain how it was pronounced, but there was definitely the sound Na. And the article was used in a similar way to the way we use it in Bulgarian. Na can be used for so many things. It's the possessive, um, the dative, uh, the, the meaning of the dative case. Uh, also, it's a preposition for time uh, that we use for some time references. Uh, yeah, actually at work when I translate uh, long strings of English words, uh, my colleagues have told me since the beginning, if I really don't know what to do, I can just start um, from the end, go all the way from the beginning and put na between every two words. Although it sounds very generic, but it really it really works. It retains the meaning. Uh, so uh, Egyptian-based vocabulary, supposedly. Uh, here, what researchers have uh, mentioned is words for um, family relations, like kaka, older sister, lelia, aunt, bate, older brother. Uh, in Egyptian, this was supposedly something like kaka, then yeya, and va. And then, of course, we can be skeptical and say that words for family relations are kind of similar across languages. Maybe they're even linked to the first sounds that a baby can make. Um, then, Persian-based vocabulary. Uh, supposedly, there are around 2,000 words in Bulgarian that share that are shared with Persian. A couple of examples: drehi, clothes, hazna, uh, treasure, and halka, ring. Then uh, the comparative superlative forms, which are not very typically Slavic, we use the particles po and nai, respectively, more and most. And something has been mentioned here about the Tokarian language. Uh, hey, Tokarian. China, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and, the far European Korean. language near China, yes? Is that right? Yes, that's okay. right. I, I know nothing uh, about Tokarian. <laughs> <laughs> Same, yes. So, for uh, example... It would be related to Uyghur, if I'm not mistaken. Uyghur, so, yeah. Ah. Cool. Yeah, Uyghur, yeah, that's it, sorry. Oh. <laughs> no, you said... Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I don't know how it's pronounced. That's, that's just how <laughs> I have pronounced it in my own head, so... <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Yes, uh, for example, an expression in Bulgarian, otpero polek, would mean lighter than feather, mm -hmm. and that would be spuk la bana. Wow. Apparently, the, the structure is similar. Mm. Uh, in relation to pashto, the particles che and a have been evoked. Mm. Then, something that has been traced to Chinese, supposedly. Uh, is the suffix chi for professions, korap chia, knik chia. These sound very archaic. This will be a, a captain and a bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is a similar thing uh, in Turkish. Uh, it's g, And we have some words actually ending with G to mark professions which came through Turkish. Mm -hmm. And then the future tense. Um, also an interesting element of Bulgarian. Uh, it is based on the verb want, ste. Actually, in Bulgarian, to say I want is uh, iskam. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the past, it was hosit, a bit like the Russian hatit. Uh, and then it changed to be ste. It is not conjugated. It is just a particle that we add, and then the conjugated verb. Um, and this has been compared with, again, Persian and Iranian, 
But then again, it exists in other languages as well, including English. I will. Mm -hmm. When we think about it, it means exactly I want to. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of examples. Govoria, to speak. Ste govoria, ste govoris, ste govori. Then I try to give some examples that uh, that show more complicated structures of it. Usually it will be really just adding ste. But let's say we have uh, otivam, which is an imperfective verb. I'm, I'm going. Uh, it really implies movement. Ste uh, otivam is possible, but it will be a very specific move, um, meaning like I will be moving, I will be in the process of going. Usually what we we'll want to say is ste otida, just I will go. Ste otidesh. Then there is a reflexive, sabuzdam se, wake up. Again, sabuzdam is actually the imperfective uh, form. So sabuzdam, it means I will be in the process of waking up. So it is not something we would say. Sabudia is simply I will wake up. Uh, to make the negative, uh, we use the word nyama, which mm. means there is not. <laughs> we mm. have a word for this. Yeah. So, nyama, da, and the conjugated verb. Ste govoria, I will speak, but nyama da govoria, I will not speak. Ne otivam, I'm not going, but nyama da. Uh, ste otida, I will go. Nyama da otida, I will not go. Nyama. And, hmm. yes, I was thinking, Alex, do you know how to make a question? For example, will I, will I speak? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> ste, uh, ste govori li? Ne. Ste govori li? Ste yes. govori li? <laughs> Particle yeah. li. Mm. Um, okay, actually, ne ste is something that exists. It was like this in the past. Instead of nyama, we mm. would use ste, ne ste. But now it sounds very, very archaic, very poetic. Mm. Okay, and um, an important side note is that even in the cases when a feature of Bulgarian has been traced to, let's say, Persian, then it is also the case with, with Slavic. Uh, so the Proto-Slavic language itself can supposedly be traced to Persian. So this kind of complicates things even more. So it might not even be linked to the Bulgar tribe necessarily, if any of these links exist. Then another, just a short mention of a theory linked to Latin. Uh, it's linked to the fact that there was an influence of the Latin speaking population that was based in the area near the Danube. Surely there is a link with Romanian here. Mm. And there's some names of uh, places mm. and river I have put mm. one town and one river that yeah. come North from uh, Latin. Almost, and uh, Isker from Uiskus. And yes, cool. the O uh, was great, by the way. Mm. Great. Did, did I say it okay? Uh, the Isker, you, you made the, the uh perfectly. Oh, yay. <laughs> not, not even trying. I, I should have tried harder, and then I would have got it wrong. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> lucky, just lucky. <laughs> Okay, and then a note on Ottoman influence, because Bulgaria was part of the Ottoman Empire uh, during 500 years. So we mentioned the Bulgars being a Turkic tribe and their being influenced from there. But the more recent influence that can be confused sometimes is literally from, from Turkish. We have some words from Turkish origins. Some of them we use in standard Bulgarian, like Cekmece, Drawer, Kilim. Uh, carpet, patwajan, eggplant, and then also there are some words coming from Turkish that form a specific register. They are very, very informal, even joking, like yok, which means no, merak, like will, desire. So they sound very funny. It's um, if we hear it uh, on TV, like in a Turkish uh, TV series, um, it will find it very funny because we don't use them in uh, standard Bulgarian. Hmm. And then there are many words uh, coming from Turkish that have been replaced by Russian counterparts. And specifically, I have noted some that come 
from French, so from French through Russian into Bulgarian, yeah. uh, like bouquet, salon, accessoire, garçonniera, and boutique. Mm -hmm. Boutique is uh, one of a set of specific words in that they change the meaning a little. Like in French, boutique can be any shop. Yeah. You can buy food from a boutique. Mm -hmm. But in Bulgarian and in Russian, it is a um, really high quality fashion shop. Mm -hmm. So it does sound strange to me when your mother says, like, I brought a baguette from a boutique, for example. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, yeah. Um, and it, it it's also quite funny to see how, like, the French language was processed, uh, like, through, like, uh, Russian and uh, then landing on Bulgarian. Right. With the sound, like, uh, especially the Your yo sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the and, yo. And the, the, yeah. That's something that... Um, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm uh, pleased to say there are a lot of uh, uh, modern Greek uh, people, there's modern mm -hmm. Greek speakers and Greeks um, who uh, like like the channel and they like to come here, which is great. And I'm really glad to all of you who are who are here today. Uh, but um, uh, sometimes a Greek person will say something that a, a word that's from Greek that I use in English, and will say mm -hmm. that oh you're you're pronouncing it wrong. Don't abuse my language or something like that. I said, and then I try to explain that almost when we when we take new words from ancient greek into english like scientific terms what mm -hmm. we do is we follow the pattern that the words came in through mm -hmm. a two millennium mm -hmm. process which was into latin first so we change like eight every k usually is a c there are very few words like um for example mm -hmm. um our cardiogram we spell with a c not a k mm -hmm. So there are a few words that sometimes mm -hmm. we'll spell with a k which is a little bit more uh, unusual a bit more greek but we usually do the latin spelling convention. Um, we saw the word oiskos, oiskos before, which actually looked kind of Greek to me. Um, mm -hmm. But spelling O-E instead of O-I is more Latin mm -hmm. instead of Greek. And then we take it through the process of Latin natural uh, pronunciation change, ultimately into French, Old French, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. as it came through Norman French into English, and then English goes mm -hmm. through a vowel shift. So uh, the way that we pronounce words, even new uh, words that we bring into uh, modern English from ancient Greek, we put through that process most of the time. So like you said, it is kind of strange to see uh, my native French word handed to Russian and then passed off to Bulgarian. Yeah. And it's interesting that the, the how that gets passed off. And there's some funny things in Japanese too that, um, yeah. yeah, from here and there, you wouldn't expect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also it's, you have seen, for example, mm -hmm. we, we also use the word merci. Uh, the word for thank you in Bulgarian is bogudaria. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can absolutely say merci. Uh, it's a little bit more colloquial. Jesus, mm -hmm. merci, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yeah. And I think even in Romania. So I find it fascinating mm -hmm. the French influence mm -hmm. in the Balkan yeah. uh, area. <laughs> I think that's really cool. How unusual. And, uh, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. And if I can actually throw my own mm -hmm. two cents on this, I've mm -hmm. noticed as well that you have some German influence with German words as well, mm -hmm. just like in French. Oh, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And Russian uh, too, there. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, so you have uh, a Rocklia, which mm -hmm. would be rock, if I'm like, mm -hmm. my, 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 my German yes. is uh, extremely, <laughs> like, um, is really far behind me, unfortunately, but my, uh, plenty of it. So you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, I think uh, uh, what was it for uh, suitcase? Kufer. Um, Kufer, same Kuffer. in German. Uh, yeah, yeah, lots of uh, little words mm -hmm. like this. Uh, yeah, it's one of those. Is it Kufer? Is it Kufer? <laughs> I yeah. can be thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep going, Agrika. Okay, and now the postfix definite article. Uh, here, examples of all possible. Articles for the masculine, it can be at or yet. Mm -hmm. And these are the full forms. Like I mentioned before, we also have the partial ones when the word is not the subject and it will be maz a con ya. Uh, in the case of um, yet, it's just the t that falls, but when we have at, it has to be changed to an a. We don't have any words ending in a. Right. Then, jena for the feminine and the teto for the neuter. Um, then 
this appears in other languages too, Romanian, Albanian, and some Russian dialects, which I have found uh, interesting. Uh, what is specific about it in Bulgarian maybe is that it is, uh, it becomes part of the word, it is not written separately. And also very often it becomes attached to the adjective that comes um, before the noun. For example, kuche to, the dog, but goliamo to kuche, the big dog. Mm. Uh, in English also, of course, there will be before big, but then we, here it's just so obvious that it becomes part of the, the adjective. Mm -hmm. uh, and the origin of uh, these articles are uh, reduced uh, demonstrative pronouns. Mm -hmm. Today we say tozi čovek, tazi žena, tovadete. That. We say this. this mm -hmm. So it's this, excuse me, it's this. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, this and that, we have an equivalent of that, uh, onzi, but we don't use it much. No. Are you familiar with that? Not yeah. really, right? Well, um, yeah. Cool. And uh, the way they were written for a while was čovek t, to say tozi čovek, hmm. žena ta, dete to. And eventually it became what today is the postfix definite article. Hmm. And finally, a little bonus. This is oh. an extract from a book. <laughs> uh, Ivan Vazov is maybe our most famous uh, author, novelist. This is a uh, novel, maybe like novella called Chichovci of 1885. Uh, the language is very, very hard. I think I made you read it at some point. Yeah. Basically, it would be <laughs> difficult even for Bulgarians. Um, and I just underlined some elements that link back to what we have been talking about. Um, so once again, I'm going to to make Luke's life harder, like I had the oh mutation break, which is a very, very uh, complicated text. Um, Sophocles so let's is see. hard, by the way, and I've, I've not studied him, so. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, so Sirich? Uh, Sirec, yes. Excuse me, I was yes. using a reduction of the vowel, like Russian. Pardon me. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yes. po prostomu. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. I'll just uh, explain uh, oh, yeah. what they mean. Uh, so, sirec is a word coming from Russian, uh, it, like toest, it means that is to say. And there is also a similar word coming from Turkish, which is uh, demek. We use them interchangeably. Mm -hmm. So, I just wanted to note here the variety of vocabulary. Uh, and poprostumo, this is really a case. Uh, it means uh, set simply in a simple way. Uh, this was kept as a fixed expression and the case was there. We wouldn't say today, but back then it could be used. Then uh, dragi priatelu, his evocative, uh, my yeah. dear friend. Feminine? It would be yeah. drag priatel. Feminine vocative. Uh, no, it's uh, it's masculine. Oh, Priet Draga Priato Ko. Oh, it's ooh, that's I see. Mm. Yes. And Poza, I'm so, am I reading them? Who's going to read them? Yes, Poza Mislen. Uh, this is just to show how highly morphological Bulgarian is. Mm -hmm. So we have the root Misle to think. Uh, za Mislen is thoughtful. Uh, with the prefix za, which means mm -hmm. kind of beginning to, and adding po, it's like in Russian, it just means a little bit, so a little bit thoughtful, poza mislen. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have pazi boze, which is also a um, uh, vocative, uh, it's uh, God forbid, God keep, uh, literally, again, a fixed expression. Uh, then the stana, here, normally, it would be an infinitive in many languages. The context is the person is saying uh, to become someone's slave. Uh, so the verb is stavam, and we say dastana, uh, to become. Hmm. Then, as nisum selam sezet. So don't worry about uh, selam sezet. It's someone's name. Actually, it's not even a name. It's a nickname, which means a person who 
uh, who doesn't talk to people when he meets them in the street from yeah, Turkish yeah, I'm not, if I'm not, I understand uh, like some, some sets. yeah I am not <laughs> Lots I'm, of, I'm, I'm uh, that part. yes so here I will just point out that we have the full definite article it is mm -hmm. a nickname yes so it can be used with an article Selim says at and it is the full one because this is what we do in this case when we have the construction I am then something then both I and the thing that I am are uh, objects so we would use the full version of the the article then another uh, actually it is a, a case sweta sweat it means vanity of vanities uh, Regular Bulgarian would be Suetana uh, Suetite. It's a quote from the Bible, so I'm guessing it's just taken readily, even though uh, cases were not used much by this time. Uh, then, Shtiach da Kaja. This is future, but future in the past. I was going to say, so Shte becomes Shtiach, Shte Kaja, Shtiach da Kaja. And then, to show negation. So this means neither a woman nor gold nor silver uh, make a man happy. And we have mm. nito žena, nito zlato, nito srebro, which means neither, 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 and then ne pravit, do not make. Hmm. Okay, so this is all. <laughs> Wonderful. Some sources. Wow. Okay, thanks very much for listening. That was so comprehensive. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, you can't leave yet, though, because we have a lot of comments and questions that we're going to look oh, yes, at, at here. Thank, but that, anyway, thank you so much. Everybody, Did I stop I sharing? Uh, oh, uh, you have stopped sharing. Yes. Yeah. You see okay, me now? Great. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, we're great. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going way back uh, to make sure, I'm going to see if I can get as many of your comments and questions uh, that... Uh, uh, or Jermaine, sure, so wherever we're about possible. Right. The Romanian currency also has the the uh, leu, so another lion mm -hmm. currency. So I don't know yeah. what's going on there. Maybe it was a was it a, a um, mm -hmm. in Bulgarian we call them lei when we talk about the Romanian currency. I never thought about mm. the fact that it, it also comes from lion. Mm. Yeah. Um, and uh, oh, a uh, question from uh, Punyo Eleven. Will it be saved as a recording? Yes, this live stream when it's complete will be a regular video. And when I get the time, I'm going to put timestamps in the description to help uh, you know find like the Q and A and so forth. Uh, let us see some more. The uh, sweet ice. Absolutely, very, yes. So I do very like good. Ice. Yeah, um, and in, in Russian, apparently that that works as a term yeah. as well as morozhnya, uh, morozhnya. Mm -hmm. And okay, thanks. I didn't know that. Yeah, von uh, Peterhoff says that uh, svat, uh, svatba, mm -hmm. svatba is etymologically svatba with the uh, T going under, going regressive assimilation. Mm. All right. Okay. Now, there's a question here about ultra Slavonic. And me, mm. it's actually, this is a four part question. So, this is part one. Uh -huh. uh, Mia mm. asks about the realization of this ultra, I think it's an ultra Slavonic letter, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. I don't know it. Do you even know how to pronounce it? Um, if I'm not mistaken, there are a few of them that look similar. I think this will be similar to the uh, if, okay. if I'm not wrong, yes. But then there were a few versions of it because the uh existed already, and yet there was this maybe. vowel and a couple of other vowels. I think maybe there was nine of them, and in Bulgarian we have six of them today. Mm. And yes, so something similar to uh, I, uh. my guess will be. Yeah, and... Uh me seems to be suggesting uh, it might have been a nasal vowel, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, or something. I don't know. Maybe, yes. Uh, for two, but according to some sources, some Bulgarian and Macedonian dialects spoken around Thessaloniki mm -hmm. and uh, Kastoria still preserve the nasal pronunciation. Hmm. So, like, I guess an uh, I don't, uh -huh. I don't know. I'm just guessing. If it's, if it's uh, and then uh, uh like uh, would be the nasally mm -hmm. version of it. I'm not doing it right, probably. Mm -hmm. Part three, mm -hmm. an example being Please read this because I can't. Uh huh. And the phonetic transcription has uh, that's I think it's that's an unrounded uh -huh. so like uh -huh. something like that. I can't do it very well. I haven't heard this uh -huh. before. Uh, and then uh -huh. grandish, grandish, 
Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. uh, there's some kind of um, and then chendo. So there's a nasal vowel, and there's the realization mm -hmm. of the ultra Slavonic letters. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's very or, interesting. Or, or yeah. for the Bulgarian. Mm -hmm. And final part. Love to know if Monoglossia knows or has any heard of the a native Bulgarian who speaks using the original nasal sounds. Mm -hmm. Maybe oh, not. Well. Um, um, yeah, so this would be people from the south of Bulgaria, maybe. Um, um, not that I can think of. We have been there, we have spent time there. Yeah, in uh, um, yes, Sandansky. for example, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. But no, nothing specific comes to mind about mm -hmm. their accent. Maybe yeah. it would take going to some small villages mm -hmm. in the area to, yeah. uh, to find this. Like we, we've been to basically Sandansky is a sort of a spa city. It's a bit of a yeah. spa city. A bit yes. of a spa city. And mm -hmm. we've been to a place where they make wine called Melnik. Mm -hmm. But sadly enough, we didn't really talk to people there. So, yes, but yeah. it's also very touristic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's yes. what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's extremely touristic. So yeah. Yes, we have some really strong dialects in Bulgaria, even mm -hmm. though it's a small country. Like my grandparents' village, you can confirm that what they speak doesn't sound like Bulgarian. I at do not all. understand a word. Yes, <laughs> this is. Um, yeah. The Shopsky region, yes, mm. it's a um, different thing altogether. We don't have the H, they don't have the H mm. sound there, for example, like, like in French. For me, it's great because, yeah. <laughs> so, mm. uh, yeah. I can't remember a, a colleague of mine, like back back in the days, was like mm -hmm. told me I had a, a kind of uh, an accent from this area. So, I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, there is uh, the uh, me. Uh, it says, uh, said that uh, was uh, much appreciated. And thank you for being a fan. Appreciate it. Become the fan of Monoglossia. Clearly, they know what they're doing uh, when it comes, <laughs> when it comes to Bulgarian and this, this stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Punyo uh, asked a question, which you answered. There are, of course, some words that you told us mm -hmm. about with uh, uh, that, uh, that origin. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Let, uh -huh. I mentioned Kuche, for example, Doug. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, I'm so bad at Polish pronunciation. Every time I look at it, I'm like, wait a minute, what? Yes. I think it's easier to read Cyrillic because I, I know what those letters are usually supposed to be. But these yes. are all my letters. So it's like, oh, wait, what is this? So, uh, mm. sorry, I'm trying, uh, is yes. asked, are there other Slavic languages with articles? Is Macedonian there, have them or no? I would guess mm. yes. Oh, yes. In fact, James I Adams confirms this. He says that mm -hmm. a little bit later. Uh, yeah, which that would be an interesting part of the uh, Sprachbund. And Graf mm -hmm. backs it up as, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, looking down the list here. Do, do, do. Let, ooh, let's see. Vamping, vamping. This is my vamping voice. Um, oh, about, about to be from uh, Thessaloniki. Oh, mm, it, it's a very beautiful city. Yes, so. I've been there. Yeah. I've never yeah, been to nice. Greece. I want to go. I want to go and mm. study modern Greek. That would be great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, and you've not studied Old Church Slavonic, right? Uh, no, I have read a couple of books about it. Yeah. But that's it. Um, and Shishkenti uh, yeah. um, it mentions that, of course, the mm -hmm. uh, languages are similar, and uh, you know, two forms of a plural-centric language. There was some discussion about uh, in the mm -hmm. comments uh, about mm -hmm. the. Um, uh, essentially what defines a language. And I wanted to say, I made a video touching on that mm -hmm. issue. I think it's a very complicated issue. And I think it's kind of different in every situation. What is a dialect and what's a language? For example, on this um, live stream today, I emphasize that Scots is a language which is closely related mm -hmm. to English rather than a dialect. And um, the reason is that um, it's, it's essentially a kind of politics that is uh, politics, mm -hmm. meaning how people or uh, interact in a mm -hmm. citizenry and, and how they see themselves and how they see one another. Mm -hmm. And if uh, and language is closely uh, connected to national identity. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, for example, the languages of Italy are called dialects of Italian, but they're not really, they're the dialects of, of just the, that location mm -hmm. of that geography. Mm -hmm. They're all related, but they're not like descended bad versions of Italian or something. Yeah. At, yeah. Uh, that's sort of the, the reputation and impression. Of course, there are um, there are some, I think, few surviving, uh, but very interesting dialects um, in France, which are just sister mm -hmm. languages to standard modern French. They're not like bad yeah. versions of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, anyway, that's so. I 
cover that in that video, so you can go take a look at it if you want. But um, so describe, yeah, I mean, the I would say all the Slavic languages, I mean, my, my very limited experience with them, just as kind of dabbling with Russian for many years and looking at a little bit of the others, is in comparison mm -hmm. to the Romance language group and the Germanic language group, which I'm so, a little bit more familiar, especially the Romance, is mm -hmm. that uh, the Slavic languages, since they seem to begin their branching off much later in the very time period you were talking about um, with the uh -huh. ultra Slavonic from Bulgaria and all, all that, um, mm -hmm. uh, gives uh, me the impression that they're just less drift and there are so many of them as well that mm -hmm. the uh, Slavic languages, I don't know, like my little bit of Russian I have when I see a bit of Polish, a bit of Bulgarian, I'm like, oh, I recognize words, grammar, it just leaps out to me um, yeah. in a way that I didn't ever feel quite as much with the Romance languages. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, what is, you know, so what defines a language or a dialect is very much, I think, um, mm -hmm. uh, a question that's not easily answered. A, lang a variety of spoken languages is a very, um, Mm -hmm. uh, careful way to say it, perhaps, but mm -hmm. uh, so that would be that part. So, but you, as a native speaker, Iglika, how have have you interacted many um, many times with Macedonian speakers? And uh, was that yes, like that? I would say so. Um, supposedly, the languages are, are I think eighty percent mutually intelligible, so it is completely possible to interact and understand each other. Really? And uh, you were speaking your own native languages and it was high? Yeah, language. yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Wow. With, That's cool. Same with Serbian, a little bit less mm. with Serbian, but Makes similarly sense. with Serbian. Mm. Makes sense that much farther east. Oh, I wanted to get up uh, so the Balkan Sprachbund. So if we get a picture of that, uh, just a sort of a, a map, because I like maps. The picture go. <laughs> picture. Um, we get the, this. Image. This, oh, this is not the best image, but it may do because uh, uh, share my screen. Mm -hmm. These are sorry. There's several images here, but it gives an idea, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps. So um, these languages are considered to be part of the Sprachbund. Mm -hmm. um, here's something important. So I have a, a friend who's uh, very much into uh, languages, linguistics in general. Um, and uh, is uh, frequently annoyed, she's Romanian, is frequently annoyed uh, about the uh, confusion of Romani called colloquially uh, gypsy. As an American, I don't find that term offensive, but we don't t have too many Romani people mm -hmm. that we interact with. So it's not mm -hmm. like something that we're, we're, I think in Europe, it's much more uh, profound. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, th I, th this is sort of my, uh, my pub <laughs> sort of public service announcement about the uh, Romani. Mm -hmm. I think the Romani, um, is a fascinating uh, culture and language, uh, which um, is associated, of course, with the Romani people who uh, are yeah. uh, uh, nomadic, uh, not, in, not exclusively, but in part for a long time, and have mm -hmm. um, settled in many parts of the world, including countries in Europe. And by coincidence, yeah. um, Romania, which is named after Roma, the city in Italy, mm -hmm. of course, the Roman Empire, mm -hmm. um, has, uh, has a very similar spelling. So. Many people, um, not too, hopefully not too many, but you see in YouTube videos, you see people say that this is the same same thing. In France a lot, mm. probably more than anywhere else. Uh, yes, because actually we, so it's kind of complicated. We have um, people that will, the people that will call Gitan, which mm -hmm. would be basically people, uh, travel, uh, travelers, but they, they, they consider like a, a group of travelers, but coming from, uh, Spain. So, right. and the, like Romani people I can, and uh, the Gitans are, are actually different. They, they, mm -hmm. they, they're not, uh, um, yeah. So the, the, um, yeah. well, the, the culture do meet, uh, in some, uh, uh the culture does me in so, in some uh, in some area actually the the the, the, the yet again they they're very different uh, group of people so we would say Roma for like uh, uh, yeah Romani people yes. coming from the like uh, south uh, east mm. uh, southeast of Europe and like Gitan well it's still deemed uh, slightly colloquial and uh, can even be used as an insult but you you would say it from, many uh, people would say Roma referring to ah, the Romani yes yes yes, yes, yes. Roma is, Rom yeah. is a Romanian Roma yeah. Mm, yes. yeah yeah so that's 
that's a point of uh, contention. And I think both groups of people mm. probably just don't want to be confused for no other reason that it's mm. it's simply uh, a misidentification, uh, which yeah. it can be. Uh, mm. I, I'd, I'd be irritated. Uh, yeah. So I can understand. So I'll just break mentioning that. Um, mm. Of course, Bulgarian here. So here's about the Danube River and uh, mm. the Roman, Eastern Roman, or not, well, yeah, the Eastern Roman Empire, but especially the Roman Empire, uh, the height had part of Bacchia or Dacia, which was here for a while, for about a century and a half. And uh, Serbo-Croatian, Albanian, fascinating language, which is not related. Uh, it's really, it's an imperial European language, of course. I'm just telling, I know you know this, I'm telling this to the people listening. Uh, Albanian is really interesting because it's essentially the only language of its branch, Elvindo European, um, mm. not closely or not, or certainly not directly related to the next door Slavic, Greek, or Italic. Mm. Uh, Macedonian, and uh, hope, I hope our Greek and North Macedonian um, viewers are will will get along as we continue to talk talk about. <laughs> the, I know it's a point of contention mm. there about the name and so forth. So, uh, but uh, yeah. hopefully, nobody nobody minds today if we use these terms as <laughs> as we see them. And Greeks, and these are not these are um, all Indo-European languages, but they all are really from rather different groups: Romance, mm. Slavic, Albanian and uh, uh, Greek, so it's it's interesting. Anyway, I just wanted yeah. to put that up for people so they could see the, uh, the Sprach. Isn't it great to travel so little and be able to, yeah. to see such yeah, different yes, languages, yeah. cultures too, but to me really the languages. Mm. You're in the middle of this cool. country, you go from Ohio to Oklahoma and it's, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's certainly much more uh, similar. Uh, mm. Okay, uh, let's see, Bulgarian very similar. Uh, oh, three definite articles. That's mm -hmm. cool. Um, and moving on here, lots of great discussion, everyone, about the different types of of uh, Greek. Uh huh. So, um, actually, I don't. But L E uh, Pex. Oh, oh, George, actually, I don't know how I ought to say your name. So hopefully, LG, I see the two letters there. So LG, mm -hmm. um, a native speaker of Pontic Greek. That's really cool. The infinitive is completely lost in common usage, only remains in stale expressions. Okay, fair mm -hmm. enough. That makes mm -hmm. sense. I think that even might be true in a few, even because mod modern Greek has uh, mm -hmm. taken fr directly um, from uh, ancient Greek, quite a few idioms and expressions. So for all I know, there's an, an idiom in, in there which has an infinitive. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, Svetli, or Svetlin, excuse me, um, <laughs> Dimitrov asks you to pronounce the longest word. Do you okay, know Okay, there it? you go. Yes, of course, we all know it. Okay. Ne protivo konstitucion stvovato stvovete. That's great, that's great. Uh, <laughs> that's so good. Thank you, Svetlin. <laughs> yeah, and let's see. Oh, regarding... Um, um, solicisms. That's, I think, the technical mm -hmm. term for a mistake that a native speaker makes. A barbarism mm -hmm. is a mistake that a foreigner would would make, um, whereas a solicism is a native speaker one. In English, of course, we just like every language, we have lots of solicisms, and mm -hmm. one of them is the irregardless. The ear being the the in a negation, and the less mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. negation. So it's a just like the vipre. What word was that? Vipre. Yeah, mm. yeah, 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 that one. Mm. Where it was the two prefixes, um, one of them is enough essentially, it's redundant. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, kind of solecism and really, really cool, cool stuff you're all talking about. And this, of course, the chat here will remain um, mm -hmm. for people to look at too. So, so if all of you want to check out the interesting things that people said, you yes. viewing mm -hmm. a future from now, um, mm -hmm. will be able to, to do that. Um, and uh, let's see, moving on. Oh, uh, oh, I lost. Oh, lost where I was. Oh gosh, I right, scroll, 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 scroll. If I can find it. Um, um, where? <laughs> let's see. Oh, and uh, me uh, was happy to receive the answer too. Uh, Thank you, me. Oh, <laughs> I got a new uh, member. Thank you, Christopher Larson, for becoming a new member of the channel. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, that's really really nice and, and generous of you. I, I appreciate that. Um, okay. Well, I think I might have lost some of the, the ones in the middle. So if you have more questions and you're still here, um, write them up quick as I, I look through. And 
Uh, let's see. Uh, let's do, do, do. Uh, okay, so Tarkarian has no living descendants, and mm. uh, Uyghur is Turkic. Okay, right, fair enough. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, thank you for the correction. No, yeah, you. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gosh, it's, I'm so on for me. I just feel mm. more and more out of my element the farther I go, uh, figuratively <laughs> east with languages. Yeah. Uh, I know so mm. little. I feel like um, uh, just uh, out of my element, I guess. But they're so interesting. Uh, uh, Pursa, thank you very much for the uh, the kind words. Yeah, I mean, gosh, what I did do? I, I didn't do anything. Uh, this is this is all uh, Glika and Alexandre today. They were telling us all about um, uh, Bulgaria, and so yeah, yeah. Subscribe to their channel. And uh, oh, and Christopher Larson and said thanks. Um, let me let you let you be remember. Thank you so much. I'm language free and fine. Uh, your YouTube is interesting since I'm learning Greek. Great, yeah. Also fascinating mm -hmm. with Slavic languages like Bulgarian, as am I. Love the similarities. Yeah, in uh, mm -hmm. in, in languages. Yeah, me me too. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for being a member, uh, Christopher. And thank you for uh, your comment. I agree. Okay, looking through here. And like I said, every anyone, if there's a, something I would I don't get to today. Um, Please uh, write it in the comments, and I'll get to it. Especially if it's Bulgarian directly related or French. We have uh, sure. oh, yeah. 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 About, yeah. about French mm. today, especially since uh, Iglika, you're living in France uh, now too. So you've been doing this mutual experience of learning each other's languages mm. in your countries, which is that's so cool. That's, mm. uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll ha we'll have to do this again. Uh, we'll do do something. Uh, um, you maybe perhaps on. Uh, on French and mm -hmm, uh, Polish sure, just sure. needle vowels, um, mm -hmm. which is absolutely true. Uh, and we saw this before, I think me said uh, how much mm -hmm. the answer was appreciated. Uh, Andras, let's see, Andra, Andreas is asking, how do they, they pronounce? Um, uh -huh. well, oh, they just... have, uh, in that accent. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, yeah, it's difficult yeah. to say because I would say they wouldn't write it. If they are writing, then it will be something formal and they would pronounce it. I don't think they have any problem pronouncing it. It's just that words wouldn't tend to, to have it. It would just not be there. For example, um, let me think, uh, Chodia to go would be Odia. It's just not there. But if they write it, they would write Chodia and if they're mm. in a formal situation, they would say Hodia. Mm. That's amazing. Huh. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Here's some Romanian Cyrillic. It's, I've mm. seen a little bit of this one. Mm. It's Romanian yeah. now uses, of, uh, of course, the Roman alphabet, but Cyrillic is mm. really cool, especially those old forms that look really neat. Mm. Um, yeah. Question from von uh, Peterhoff. Wonder if uh, liturgical uh, mm -hmm. language used liturgy is uh, in the Bulgarian Orthodox Church, modern Bulgarian, something closer to Old Church Slavonic, or a more Russified Church Slavonic, like in Serbia or something yes. else? Um, well, basically, uh, starting from the 12th century, it uh, there is no longer references to Old Church Slavonic. It would now be uh, Church Bulgarian, Church uh, Serbian, Church Russian. So it will be a language that sounds close, I'm sure, to, although we don't know what exactly it sounded like, to Old Church Slavonic and not very much like modern Bulgarian, um, more like Russian, if I can put it in this way, um, their cases. So yes, I would say it sounds more, more like Russian than like Bulgarian. Uh, and I would say it's strongly based on Old Church Slavonic, but it wouldn't be called Old Church Slavonic. It would be just um, Church Bulgarian. Mm. Cool. And uh, Jacob asked a question that uh, I think we might have uh, gotten to a little bit earlier, like uh, as far as an, an interesting accent when speaking to mm -hmm. um, uh, with words of that are the same between uh, the two languages. But I think you maybe did answer that. Um, um, well, I know that personally, I've only met yes, one uh, person from Macedonia, so I've gotten not yes, uh, equipped uh, to answer. I don't have much things, experience so. uh, writing to to people from uh, from Macedonia. Uh, they would use the Latin alphabet, mm. so that automatically just makes a bit of a barrier. Mm. 
um, so written the same. Yeah, it's hard to say since it's not the same alphabet. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I suppose Cyrillic is used too, but I have never seen it mm. being used. Although I think there's an aspect that you can mention that I would probably uh, be interesting mm -hmm. is that you're using actually you're actually using uh, the Latin alphabet when you have to when you're in a uh -huh. position when you absolutely mm -hmm. cannot use. The, yes, uh, yes, we have um mm. we have a term for Bulgarian written in Latin. We say. Uh, it's very colloquial, it's a bit uh, derogatory, like Maimunica, like monkey language, mm. um, Shlokovica, again, it, mm -hmm. it's really something that's considered impolite. Here there is really no similarity with Macedonian or Serbian where um, mm. it is uh, standard to write in Latin. But to the point that you're actually using numbers, and that's what oh, I find yes. quite fascinating. Uh, like, for example, uh, our son Stefan will say Stefcho. And we'll write like Steph 40 because it's uh, it. Uh, yes, the, to, to do the ch, we would put a four because it looks like ch. It looks like the Bulgarian ch. Um, to yeah. for sh, we would put a six. I don't know why mm. <laughs> it doesn't look similar. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I find it absolutely fascinating. Yes, it's just really really <laughs> improvised. We don't yeah. know where where these come from. Mm. To say to write ya, we would not use something like ya. We would use q. For whatever reason, mm. eh, convention. Just very yeah. It's all mm. convention. Mm. Uh, well, Alex and Iglika, thank you so much. This has uh, been really fun. Uh, yeah, thank we will do it again yeah. in, in the future. Everybody out there, please subscribe to Monoglossia. Uh, how do you say it? I'm just saying it like the modern Greek way. How do you say one? Mon Monoglossia? Uh, don't even think about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just say Monoglossia, yeah. like okay. polyglossia, just regular kind of English. Oh, <laughs> Which is also a great yeah. point. Um, what, when utilizing a Greek uh, word in what the West, the Western languages like English, um, the stress follows the pattern mm -hmm. that Latin would do, which is glossia, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. monoglossia, which makes sense mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of monoglossia, so which is mm -hmm. the, the modern and to a degree ancient Greek way of, mm -hmm. way of saying it. Latin had, uh, well, I won't talk about that now. I actually have. The whole video series in Latin pronunciation. <laughs> you guys can watch. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you so much, all out there, for watching. Your comments and questions, anything we didn't cover, or questions you have, or comments later, please post them uh, after this video goes live, which will be in a few minutes, I think. Or go like it is live. Uh, it goes uh, into a <laughs> preserved permanent yeah. thing, yeah. and uh, we'll be delighted um, to to investigate your questions. Mm. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, um, merci and merci. Um, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> hey, what a useful word. That's great. <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.